Uh, joining yeah. me now is James Freeman of the Wall Street Journal, Liz Peek of the Fiscal Times, and former Trump campaign advisor and Fox News contributor Steve Cortez. Good to see you all. Uh, James, first to you, a lot of people aren't just hoping for change. They're doing something about it. There's a conservative group that is funded in part by the Koch brothers. Uh, they just put an ad against the border adjustment tax. They say, we need tax cuts. We don't need a new tax. Here's their ad. Let me get you to comment after. America voted for change, economic growth, and to stop wasteful spending. But now, some members of Congress want a new trillion-dollar bat consumer tax that could drive up your costs and hurt our economy. More for gas, groceries, clothes. Prices on everyday needs could skyrocket, costing us up to $1,700 more. This new consumer tax increase, as big as Obamacare. Tell Congress that's not the change we're asking for. So I'm not only hoping for tax cuts, I'm hoping that we don't add a new tax. Uh, is it dead or not? Well, it's probably dead politically, but that was junk economics in that ad. This is basically the, the, uh, the border tax was a way to cut rates to make it simpler, right. to, to collect the same amount of money in a more efficient way that allows more growth. But if you want to get rid of that and just keep the cuts... I think that would be fine. That should be what the okay. uh, administration is after right now. I, I think that that's graphic a, a little too soon. Let me just get to Liz on this. This is this is a bipartisan tax cut. The Simpson Bowles Commission was was empowered. Keep that keep that graphic up there. Simpson Bowles Commission was empowered by President Obama. There were Republicans and Democrats who voted. It brought down tax rates. Look at this. The individual rates. Go, we go from seven rates that we have now down to three, 12, 22, and 28 percent. Corporate tax rate would come down to 28 percent. Yes, you'd get rid of a bunch of these deductions, uh, most of which are, are just enabling corporations to avoid taxes. But why don't we go for this, Liz? This is, this is already a bipartisan tax idea that was floated a few years ago. Yeah, well, I think the uh, My Fair Lady line is, wouldn't it be loverly? Uh, the problem is, the realistic answer is, there is no bipartisan consensus today on tax reform. And by their what they, way, it didn't happen then either. Nancy Pelosi's uh, reaction to the simpson Bowles recommendations was dead on arrival, if you recall. So... Right. Uh, look, the border adjustment tax has been embraced by none other than Grover Norquist. That really tells us a lot. Well, hold um, on a second, because <laughs> I had him on and we talked about that. He said only if it's part of a, of a sure. big tax cutting package. Well, that, he said that's if I point. have to jettison it, I would. That's the point, though. And as James pointed out, that ad is really misleading because it is a balancing mechanism. Right. People would be better off because their tax rates would be lower and the border adjustment tax would not impact most Americans to the extent that they would benefit from their lower tax. All right. Well, Steve, here's what I really like about the Simpson-Bowles idea. First of all, lowering rates tremendously has, has a, a past, a proven past. But also Paul Krugman hates the idea. And anything that Paul Krugman hates <laughs> is bound to be good. He, of course, is the New York Times uh, reporter who suggested, he's a Nobel Prize winning author, he suggested right. that, in fact, uh, we were going to have this crash as a result of Trump's election. It wasn't true. But he said, so a public service reminder, Simpson Bowles is terrible. I'm reading from a, a piece he wrote a couple of years ago. It mucks around with taxes, but is obsessed with lowering marginal rates, despite a complete absence of evidence that this is important. Well, that's hogwash. Right. There's a lot of evidence that lowering tax rates boosts the economy, right? Right, except all of economic history, David. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, he deserved his Nobel Prize in economics about as much as President Obama deserved his Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> uh, so I don't put too much uh, credence in what they decide over there in Scandinavia about Nobel Prizes. But listen, what I do know is that I am personally dealing with filing my taxes right now. Uh, and I think every American who is knows two things. Number one, they're insanely too complicated. Right. The fact that we have to go through what we go through every April or October if you defer. Um, and then secondly, that they are simply too high. They are confiscatory levels right now. It's strangling economic growth in the United States. And on top of that it's also enabling the kind of cronyism which team right. trump very much ran That's right. against yeah. so, so get i rid believe of, though listen, get rid of I, the I deductions, true believer. go from seven rates yeah. to three rates that's what simpson bowles say and lower the tax rates tremendously sounds David, good to we're going to do it you, you we, we are go going to do it i still believe bowles, David. David. i'm sorry i love you but we got to move on melissa <laughs> All right, President Trump meeting with Budget Director Mick Mulvaney at the White House right now. Mulvaney is expected to send a letter to federal agencies this week ordering them to make plans 
to become smaller and less costly. Mulvaney will also be attending the meeting tomorrow between some of the biggest American CEOs and President Trump to talk infrastructure. James, I'll start with you. Um, I mean, this trillion dollar public private infrastructure package, it seems like it's way down on the list of important things right now, but is something that a lot of people would get behind. Yeah, well, I think the infrastructure piece is something you use to tie into a tax cutting plan if it's a way to get Democrats on board. If it's just uh, in a vacuum, it's not the way to grow the economy. That's not government directed investment is not how we're going to get to that three, four percent growth that we need. And I, I hope they realize in the administration after that March jobs report that being not Obama is not enough. He's yeah. got to enact some of these growth policies. And, and Liz, I mean, cutting the size of government is exactly what voted him into office. But now as he arrives, it, it's painful and tough. Oh, my gosh. Remember during the sequester, the bloodletting that went on about the idea that maybe someone would have to just keep budgets where they were, and much less cut them 5 percent. It was ridiculous. I mean, I don't know a CEO in America that has not at one time or another in his career been asked to cut expenses by 5 percent or 10 percent. And yet, somehow, the federal government is immune to such suggestions. And the notion that it is so efficient and so properly run that there is no excess, all Americans disagree <laughs> with that. That is 100 percent agreement across the board that the government should go on a budget. Steve, it, it never fails to amaze me that in Washington, standing still with your budget, <laughs> oh, there's weeping and crying and gnashing of right. teeth and beating of fists on the ground. But just like Liz said, in corporate America, it is standard. A new CEO yeah. takes over or a company it needs a turnaround. You say everybody, 5 or 10 percent, has got to go. That's normal. Right. Well Melissa, it's also standard in families, right? Uh, you know, uh, mom and dad didn't make True. as much money or our expenses went up because somebody's going to college. All of us deal in the realm of economic reality except Washington, D.C., which is one reason, by the way, why four of the five richest counties in America by income are in the Washington, D.C. metro area. I think that is a tragedy. It's not because Washington it's works true. harder. It's not because it's more creative. It's, it's because it is a gigantic well. leech upon the rest of the country. Trump was elected, though, to end that, to kill the he's leech, to slay it. the dragon, and he's going to.